Hey, welcome back friends and neighbors. How we doing today? Your old buddy Brad coming at you here with a new and exciting episode of Somewhere Downrange or other people like to term it as what the hell's that old boy up to now? <laughs> I don't care what you call it. Welcome to the Maiden Voyage first video filming in uh, one of the uh, new studios of BAB Productions. Yes, we are in the man cave. You see behind me a library. You see reloading stuff. And if you could see the other walls, you'd see some other fun stuff too. And a few heads and a few fishes. <laughs> but I have relocated. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say I'm liking it. This could be much better digs. And once I get it all like I want it, it's going to be perfect. Anyway, I'd like to welcome you to this episode. And for today's offering, I have something I've been wanting to get my hands on one for quite a while. Only I never was going to pay the money you had to pay to get one. But uh, because of good fortune and good friends, I've been able to get my hands on one to go out and shoot a little video on. So without further ado, Brad, show us what you got. Pregnant pause. <laughs> Slow rise into frame. Oh, what is that you got your hands on, Brett? Well, let me tell you, for those that don't know, that is, this is, an absolute, actual, Romanian PSL 54R. It's basically the stretch limo of the AK platform. In the Mosin Nagant caliber, the 762x54R. Now, I see a lot of videos, and I have over the last several years when I kind of would see one of these things, and I'd kind of check it out. And they're like, oh, it's the Romanian version of the SVD, of the Dragunov, all that stuff. Um, and in about a halfway bastardized way, it may be, but... Um, what you got to pay for one of these, you'd think you'd get dragging off, but dragging off's going to run you nine grand. These puppies are going to run you too. Now, for people who really dig Soviet grade weapons, especially on a Kalashnikov platform, it's probably cat daddy if you ain't rich enough, you know, to shell out nine grand for a dragging off if you can find one and you get one of these and you damn near got you one by all accounts that I've heard. I have absolutely zero experience with this weapon as far as how it shoots, whether it's accurate, whether it ain't. But I have been doing some, you know, light investigative work into it, been looking around trying to gather information. And from what I glean from uh, most of the information out there, this weapon can readily be expected to be a two minute of angle rifle at a hundred yards. Okay. Uh, it's probably doable. Two inch group, hundred yards. I would certainly freaking hope so. Now, it does shoot a powerful cartridge. 7.62 by 5.4R is basically the Soviet comparative version of the US 30-06 or the Cal US 30. Um, your main bullet weights are going to be in the high 140s, low 150s. I, I haven't found any above 148, 155, something like that. 150, it's a weird number, 153, I don't know. Um, but I do have a couple of different types of ammunition for it. FMJ and soft point that uh, my good friends down at Minko at R&M Arms Company there, Ronnie and Mindy Porter, uh, they supplied me with the means to be able to produce this video and bless their hearts for giving me the opportunity to do this because I've been wanting to shoot one of these. They're always, you know, kind of curious because, damn, I thought, well, that's, just, that's a stretch limo, the AK platform right there, and it ought to be badass. Now, this does have the original Soviet fixed power 
fixed focus, four power, small tube uh, optic. And let me tell you something, it is hell forced out. <laughs> It's got the coating and the manufacturing style of stuff you used to see back in the in the late 50s, early 60s. I mean, it is built tough, and I mean tougher than Ford Tough ever thought about being. And it has its extendable sunshade. It has its adjustable turrets for when you zero it. They are numbered for your range elevation. And it is a single solid state unit. There's no separate mount. When you take that mount loose, the whole thing comes off because it's all one piece. And I tell you what, that's pretty solid. That's got to be as solid as you can get. Um, you, the other features, of course, a lot more barrel. The long stroke AK piston, gas pistons, just like the AK system is. And it's got that thumb hole style stock. It is heavy duty. I'll say that for it, 10 round magazine, and I really think it's going to be fun to shoot. But I got to looking at some videos, and you know, you, you've thumbed through there, you should go through there, just PSL 54R, and you see a lot of videos where like PSL 54R, 1500 yards, 1700 yards, 800 yards, and I'm going, wait a minute. And then I look, and they've got this scope on there, and I'm going, how? in the hell are you seeing a target at 1500 yards with a fixed four power scope now granted got some pretty good glass in it but it is a small tube i won't call it a one inch tube and i won't call it a half inch tube it's somewhere in the middle <coughs> it's fixed power fixed focus and there's no zoom ring and i'm wondering what in the hell are they shooting at at 1500 yards well, it appears to me from some of the videos I've seen, the targets are extremely large. <laughs> I would hope so, because, damn. Um, but I watched a couple of videos where they had some people shooting these, and they're shooting at these long ranges, 15 and 1700 yards, and you got 10 or 12 rounds coming out of the gun, and um, they're hitting kind of close at times and other times they're way the hell off from it and you really can't judge much from a two-dimensional motion picture image as to whether or not they're coming close or not and you've got a camera that's recording the strike of the bullet from 1500 yards away through a magnification unit that literally shows you every little way I mean it's just tough to do but uh, I'm not going to say that it ain't capable, but I'm going to say I'm going to take all that with a couple of grains of salt because, damn, like I said, we got a two minute of angle standard, minute and three quarter at the most, smallest on this rifle, on its standard. We have a semi automatic action. Nothing's bedded, it's just thrown together hell for stout and of all those things there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet and that's the fact that this thing has got the most horrid trigger I've ever felt on a rifle that somebody says is designed for long range shooting now those of you that are familiar with an AK platform are familiar with the fact that the trigger on an AK-47 is nothing like the trigger on an AR platform. It's certainly not even in the same solar system as the triggers on bolt guns. And for precision long-range bolt guns, this trigger system isn't even in the same quadrant of the same galaxy. It's out there in infinite space. Th that trigger, you pull it, you, you don't know, where, there's no wall. You start pulling and it starts semi loading up and then you keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling finally it goes click I don't know how you expect to get precision long range out of that but I'm willing to give it a try so what we're going to do friends and neighbors is we're going to load this puppy up and some ammo and uh, like I said I've got two three different kinds of ammo I'm going to shoot for it 
Got about 70 rounds put through it. And we're going to go out the range. The first thing we're going to do is put this puppy down on the bench and we are going to make sure that it is zeroed for the ammunition I have the most of. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're going to zero it at 100 yards. And uh, then we're going to switch everything over and throw it in the truck and drive over to one of the other ranges and get us a little bit of distance and just give us a little test as to just what we can expect accuracy wise performance and success wise for long range precision rifleman shooting with this specific platform now, I got a couple of things I want to tell you about, and I'm going to do it with me off camera with close-ups of the weapon so that you'll get a good look at what I'm talking about and what we're saying. And we're going to go through those little items, and then psh, through the magic of video production, we're going to slide our ass out of the range and start making a little noise. Stand by. Alrighty. Now... This is representation of the two types of munitions we're going to be firing out of this bad boy. On the left is the <clears throat> Brown Bear brand, made in Russia, 203 grain. It says we're bimetal. Don't ask me what that means. I'm going to have to look that up. Projectile, soft pointed, obviously a hunting round. On the right, is 148 FMJ lead core bullet 148 grains I'm assuming this is probably the standard Mosin Nagant round uh, like I said don't have a lot of experience with them but that one being 148 is probably going to be fairly comparable to the standard 147, 150 grain, 30 out six. The 203 grain, I'm not sure about. So we're gonna have to throw a chronograph on the end of this barrel and find out just what kind of muzzle velocities we're getting from these two because we're gonna have to put those into the dope data for the long range shoot. Both steel cased, both lacquer finished, and uh, <laughs> relatively inexpensive really compared to most of your <clears throat> non-standard U.S. rounds. So, stand by. Let's look at something else I want to talk about. Alright, now, here's the other issue <laughs> that I really have some concern over as to um, how are we going to ring some long-range precision accuracy out of this puppy? Now, I won't, I, I, I'm loathe to use the word precision. Let's use combat suppressive designated marksman successful shooting um, you'll notice that the bolt is locked to the rear it's one of the things that's nice about this platform it actually has a bolt hold open actuated by the follower of the magazine so you can change out your magazines while the bolt stays open now there's no bolt release tab or bolt release button like you would have on some rifles. So you basically throw the new mag in, slightly depressed to the rear on the lever and the bolt slides home. So that's a pretty cool option. That's, that's doable. That's neat. The thing I'm concerned with is this atrocious ass trigger. <laughs> so let's go ahead and close the bolt. You heard it go snip. Go ahead and move itself. Sorry if you got a little bit of visual cuvade off that. Now, I'm going to try to pull this trigger. I'm going to do it in a way that you can see just how much take up travel we are going to experience. Okay, so the trigger is at rest, weapon is cocked, it's off safe, and it is unloaded. So let's start pulling. Okay, now from that point, as you start to pull, you can actually feel the trigger want to kind of jump back on its own. So that can be misleading. You see it kind of do that. 
Now, I don't know if that's what they term as the wall or not. And we keep on peeling. Now I encounter a little more resistance from there. So here we are. We jump back and we start pulling and it skitters. It just kind of dunk goes back. Goes back some more. Now it's kind of loading up and I'm getting a pretty solid rearward pressure on my finger. But not enough. <laughs> you saw it just make another jump. It's still moving. It's still moving. It's still moving. And it finally goes. Let me tell you something. That is going to play hob and hell with me. Any precision rifle, I have any rifle that I've got set up to shoot long range with optics. When you put your finger on the trigger and you apply eight ounces of pressure, it's gone. It's just out of the trigger, barely moves. So this is going to be somewhat of a challenge for me to get used to. All right, stand by. One other point of interest you might want to know about. All right, so one other little thing I want to mention, draw your attention to, is the scope mount emplacement on the mount's rail that is a part of the weapon. I've encountered a few of these in the wild at gun shows and in, once in a while in a shop that are wearing their scopes, and every now and again, I see one whose scope is sitting mounted at this position on the rail. Now, I don't know why that is, but if you pick that weapon up with that scope sitting at that basic position, you're going to feel like you have way too short an angle to the scope, and you and then you almost you can't put the stock to your shoulder. You're like, where is the length of pull? Because damn, these things are made for short people. But when you look at that, and you look at the measurement from the trigger back to here, yeah, you're 13, 13 and a quarter, almost 13 and a half. So you think, what the heck's going on? Well, these mounts in these rails have a tendency to kind of hit that center point and they won't lock up, but they come to a stop. They kind of skid in coming down that rail and a lot of times you get right there and it feels like it falls into a recess or a detent you think okay that's where it needs to be uh, no that's not where it goes now this is your locking lever and it will secure and lock the scope at that point but let me tell you something when you go to actuate this and pull it out from behind the stop you better have hands like a like a 1940s communist tent seamstress because your fingers are going to play hell getting that out of there without a tool, all right? Anyway, I digress. But I've seen more than one mounted there like that. That is not where that scope goes. This mount hits that point where it kind of stops and you feel like it went someplace and then all of a sudden if you give it a little tangential movement you'll find that it can move forward and it will move forward all the way forward till it cannot move it forward anymore and that is where you're going to lock that scope in and you'll also find that this locking lever goes over somewhat easier <laughs> so just in case you see one or you see somebody shooting one or you see one in the store just because it's sitting back here at midpoint, that don't mean that's where it goes. Once you've got it locked into position here, you're going to find that your length of pull is just fine. You'll be able to see it, no problem. Okay, on to something else, all right? Stand by. All right, one last little point. Um when it comes to my reservations for long range accuracy on this weapon is the combination of its barrel length and width. Now, this is by no means whippy steel, I'm sure, but it is a barrel 
whose contour measures at the center point between the gas block and the front side at 0.591. So, not very much over half an inch, uh, not even five eighths yet. Now, when this barrel starts getting hot, I have a feeling it's going to want to move a little bit. Granted, the rear of the barrel obviously has a heavier contour up in that trunnion in the receiver, but uh, I just don't know. I, I, that barrel reminds me a lot of a barrel I had on a really nice Remington 700 ADL in 243. It's a damn fine gun. But it weren't no 1500 yard gun. And the video I watched was 10 rounds or more and never a hit on the target. In fact, a lot of the hits looked to be a long ways away from it. So I just, I think. I don't know, maybe I haven't found the right video yet, but I think people are kind of, you know, <laughs> maybe expecting a little more from this. Who knows, maybe one of their favorite movies is American Sniper, and they think they're going to be able to do something that uh, <clears throat> repeats movie magic. Maybe it's been done, maybe I haven't found that video yet. But if I do, I'll damn sure watch it more than once. Okay, so, Horrid Trigger. Tiny scope, fixed power, fixed focus, whippy ass little barrel, <laughs> semi automatic platform, firing a round that's basically loaded for combat munitions and has an acceptable standard of somewhere between one and a half and two minutes of angle at 100 yards. This, boys and girls, is going to be a challenge, especially with that whippy ass little .591 barrel. All righty, stand by. Let's grab all this crap, throw it in the truck, and head out to the range. What do you say? See you in a minute. Hey, welcome to the range, friends and neighbors. Glad you got to get out here with me. Got that PSL 54R up on the bag. We got us a 10 round magazine locked and loaded in there full of that 203 grain brown bear by metal load. Um, gonna give it a shot now. We're sitting at 50 yards right now. I'm just gonna do a quick zero test. Make sure the weapon's on where it needs to be. If not, have to turn around and do some zero work. I won't make you sit through that. But for right now, we're at 50 yards. Gonna go ahead and check zero. Hopefully it's already zeroed. <laughs> and uh, I can already tell I'm gonna have some issues with this reticle. It's built for a younger person's eyes that doesn't have corrective lenses. Very thin, very small. Just when I look through it, I can see the chevron. I can see everything that's in it but I can't see it well so there's no side focus there's no diopter focal adjustment on this it's fixed everything on it is fixed so bear with me I'm gonna have to do a little trial and error and kind of look at things different ways see what makes the best application of both and what I may do I may just use the bottom of the target itself, the black splatter shot target. I may just use the bottom of that itself as my aiming point, just so I don't lose the chevrons and the black hash marks in the black of the target. Because it's a little different. It sure is. All right. Well, maiden voyage for me. First time shooting one of these bad boys. Let's see how it goes. So it'll be fun. This trigger's damn sure gonna be fun.
Not as bad as I might have thought, but it ain't fun either. You just got to kind of pull through it. Well, let's go down and check it out. Well, hell, I've got optic. Let's just stand right here and do it. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Got two distinct groups. More or less good for left and right, just an inch or two above the entire target. Damn. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Stand by. We'll be back. Alrighty then. <laughs> well, as you might be able to tell from the angle, the sun on my face, the sweat on my brow, maybe a wet spot or two on the shirt, it's 50 rounds later and two hours later, getting hot as hell here in central Oklahoma coming up on noon. So I've, you can tell from that last picture just before this scene starts, yeah, I had to walk it around a bit. Man. But, I made those final tweaks. Pretty sure we got her sitting where she needs to be. There's just one thing to do now. And that's see if we've got her where we need her by wringing a little steel and then getting the hell out of this sun. <laughs> so, without further ado, we got 10 rounds in her. We're going to turn that camera angle around get it pointed at that steel and see if we can ring some of them plates got 10 shots hopefully we'll get 10 whacks now stand by for the uh, second range day where we go out and do some long range and I'm talking four six and eight hundred meter stuff attempts I ain't promising a damn thing because let me tell you something by the looks of the groups, this thing's printing at 100 meters, and we are at 100 meters, which is 110 yards. <laughs> I don't hold out a lot of hope for having much fun over 400, but I could be wrong. So without further ado, let's spin that camera angle around. Let's whack some steel and get in someplace cool, get a little lunch and something cool to drink, what do you say? Stand by. Make a little noise, boys. Here's mud in your eye. I call that 10 successful claimed step on kills, baby. Okay, think we got where we need her. Stand by for some after action. Be right back. Oh. Well, Folks, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what the weatherman says, summertime is here. And by God, it's going to be 97 degrees out there today. So, uh, how about we touch on a few points? <laughs> wow. 
that little scope ain't no fun. I know aesthetically it belongs there. And I don't know that maybe some people have worked some fine wonders with it, but let me tell you something. I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope for any fun or success past 400 yards tomorrow on steel. Man. <laughs> now you'll notice in the still photos of the groups as they progress on the target board. My first group, I assumed this weapon was zeroed. My first group was more or less pretty close to center for left and right, but uh, my point of aim was putting the tip of the chevron in the reticle just on the bottom of the very bottom of the black splatter shot target. Full sight picture. And that group was impacting 13, 14 inches high. So I turned around and thought to myself, well, I am at 50 yards. And if it's zeroed at 100, maybe that's causing the difficulty. So I moved back to fire my second group from 100 meters, 110 yards. And as you can see from the second still, that group hit even higher in the wood above the target backboard itself. And it held about the same level of accuracy as the first one did. Three shot cluster and then two over here. And then the other one had three shots to the left and two over here. So I thought, hmm. Now I've never adjusted one of these scopes before. And it did not occur to me that the click increments on those turrets were going to be half mil clicks. I didn't assume they were anything else, but I just didn't think about that. But I thought to myself, well, I'm going to have to loosen them top screws and go ahead and bring that center adjustment top knob, the black one, down quite a bit. And I did. I brought it down a third of a turn. And then I fired my third group and it was just below the edge of the bottom of the target board. But still more or less on a center line with the other two. I thought, well, at least I'm underneath the target now. I can start working my way up. And so I shot groups four and five and they clustered up closer. I just kept making the incremental adjustments. This process took me a good two hours because loosening those screws doesn't just allow everything to freewheel. You really got to pay attention or you'll move something without intending to. But I finally reached a point, as you can see in that fifth still, in the fourth still, that I had the group just about where I wanted it and all I needed to do was make one click left and then fire for effect. And that's shown by the 10 shot group that's just off to the right of the black pasters at the bottom of the target. So I made that one click left adjustment and then I fired the 10 round string into the steel. It rang them. Knocked them around pretty good, and I didn't miss a shot. So, combat-wise, at 100 meters, I had a bunch of dead guys. But taking this out tomorrow for some long-range steel, and we're going to start at 400. I've only got 40 rounds left, <laughs> and I had to go to the store and get that really not going to be able to do a bunch of adjusting. I'm just going to have to wing it. Kentucky windage. Now, I would like to have done it today, but it got so ding-dong hot and it took me so long to get that zero set. There's no way I could finish it today. So I really thank you folks for coming out, watching this video, and please stay tuned tomorrow because I'm going to drop that long range tomorrow afternoon as well. Another thing I want to touch on was the trigger. 
oh my God, I don't know how anybody expects to get <laughs> fine shot placement past 100 yards with that trigger. It drove me nuts. Now, I don't know, maybe somebody makes an aftermarket package you can drop in there that's really nice, but this one is certainly stock. So I'm going to go throw her on the rack, bust her down, give her a good cleaning, get her ready for tomorrow, and we'll see what we see, see how she does. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you come back tomorrow for episode two. And hopefully we'll get to ring a bunch more steel at much greater ranges. And if I can ring 10 shots at 400 in a row, I'll be impressed. And if I can ring five in a row from six, I'll buy somebody a beer. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for coming out. Glad you got to see me, and I'm glad you stopped in. And like I said, tune in tomorrow for the continuing saga of the uh, poor man's Dragunov Romanian long-range marksman, hopefully, bad guy getter. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Love you guys. Take care. Be good. And I will be seeing you shortly somewhere downrange. Bye.